Hello guys and gals, Buffalo here. Welcome back to the range. A while back, I did a video review of this Maverick 88 with the fully rifled slug barrel. And toward the end of that review, I realized that my rear sight had rattled loose. So after that video, I tightened up everything on the rear sight, got it ready to go again, and realized that my front sight had rattled loose. So there's a little hole in front of the sight that has a set screw in it that holds the sight in place. I took a little Allen wrench, took that set screw out, put some blue Loctite on it, put it back in, locked everything down. Now I'm good to go. But I wanted to let you guys know if you have one of these, keep an eye on your sights. I'm not saying that yours will come loose, but both my front and rear sight came loose on this shotgun within about 10 rounds of ammunition. So, uh... Uh, probably weren't tightened down at the factory just like I said something you might want to keep an eye on but I'm ready to start the slug testing now and the first slug we're going to take a look at today is the one that I shot during that video review and that's the Brennicky Super Sabo and this time I've got it in the three inch magnum <laughs> Okay, so let's take a quick look at these shotgun slugs that I'm shooting today. These are made by Brennicky. They're the Super Sabo. Sabo, Sabo, Sabot. Uh, say it however you want. I don't know what you're talking about if you're using it in a sentence. If you want to correct me for saying it wrong, go ahead and do that in the comments. It helps with the algorithm. These are made for the 12 gauge. That's what we need for that shotgun. And these are the 3 inch. The last time I was shooting these, I was shooting the 2 and 3 quarter inch. Take a look at the back of the box, see what kind of information is here. We've got one and one eighth ounce on that slug. It says suitable for all deer species, bears, and wild boar. Muzzle velocity, 1,525 feet per second. Energy, 2,536 feet per second. Of course, that's the advertised stuff. Uh, we don't know what we're going to get out of my particular shotgun until I shoot it over the chronograph, which I will do in this video. Shows a five-shot group at 110 yards, measuring 2.3 inches. I won't be shooting anywhere near that. I might be able to shoot 2.3 inches at 50 yards. We'll see. Uh, those sights on that uh, shotgun aren't my favorite style of iron sights. And I've kind of lost confidence in them since I've had to tighten them both back up. It does show that you can get some expansion. It says expansion up to a full inch after hitting target. It looks like it's got a, a brass post to there in the middle. You can see it's got an aluminum tip. But it looks like the aluminum tip comes off and it leaves a brass post and the brass uh, outside jacket expanded. So here's what one looks like. You can see that aluminum tip in there and you can see that brass housing it's more of a housing than a jacket uh, the aluminum part is not jacketed here I've got the crimp cut off of one so we can take a look at it remove it from the sabo now we've just got the slug here and you can see it is a wild looking slug all brass and aluminum it's a lead free slug design I did weigh this one, and it came in just a shade under one and one eighth ounces, uh, probably within the error margin of this little scale. And with a diameter of .628, this is a 63 caliber slug. Looks like the brass is two pieces. Going by the picture on this, it looks like when it makes contact, it looks like this comes forward and pushes that aluminum point out and leaves a brass post. So we'll see. We'll, we'll see if I can get one to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is shoot a group with them. Now, take the groups with a grain of salt. Again, I'm shooting open sights here, iron sights, and they're not the best sights in the world. But it will give us an idea of what's going on. We'll start there and see where it takes us. So here I am with the bench. I've got my target set up at the 50-yard mark.
1463 and for the record this shotgun does have a 24 inch barrel 1444 all right let's go check this out I'm going to grab a target and cover this chronograph. It's already wet. It is. We are shooting in a light rain. I don't want it to get too wet if I can help it. Here we are at the 50 yard line. I love how clean those slugs cut holes like a like a wad cutter this group looks very similar in size to the ones i shot before so i don't think the sight was moving around when i was shooting that group looks like about a little less than two and a half inches i'd say about two and a quarter i am slightly left i could move that rear sight just a little bit more to the right if i wanted to but for now i'm going to leave it right there so I was walking back to the bench and I just happened to notice that all three of those sabos separated from the slug and fell within a few feet of each other at about 16 yards from the muzzle. I like that consistency. So sitting on a bench and shooting from a lead sled is one thing. I want to see what I can do standing. I am 50 yards from that steel target down there. I've got three rounds loaded up. Let's see if I can even hit the dang thing. I put two right on top of each other. That was the first and last shot. The second shot, I pulled way over here to the left, but it is what it is, that's life for you. Let's have a little fun here. I've got all these one gallon jugs that I hand filled with ballistic tap water. Let's put a slug into them. So I took those three velocities that we got from the chronograph and I realized it was only three shots, but that's still three data points that we can use here. I averaged those three velocities and got about 1,447 feet per second, which comes to about 2,278 foot-pounds of energy. So just short of the advertised velocity and energy, but still pretty impressive. All right, so I see one, two, three, and those are just mangled. Four, five, six, here's a through and through, seven, Oh, we've got our slug in here. We've caught the slug in the seventh jug. Let's see what that looks like. <laughs> that slug did not expand at all. The bottom here did collapse onto itself, the little piston piece. But it's a, uh, it didn't, zero expansion. On that slug i expected a little more expansion going by the picture that they gave on the back of the box and from my experience shooting water jugs like that if a bullet's going to expand it'll expand in water 
Okay, so I wanted to show you the one we just fired here next to one that hasn't been fired. And as you can see, the only real difference is the one that's been fired, the piston here, has pushed forward and pushed that aluminum point out. Pretty neat, actually. I wonder how... Hey, that's... I can move that. <laughs> you could actually push that back in there and reload that and shoot it again because it... It's not deformed at all. No expansion on it. Still in good shape. Now I know they they advertise expansion up to one inch on this slug, so it's a little bit of a fail. But at the same time, look at that thing. That's still going to leave massive damage to any kind of soft target you shoot with it. All right, so that's about going to do it for today's video. I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for hanging out with me at the range today. I am going to do a few more of these slug videos. I want to find what works best in this shotgun. So, I guess that's it. Always remember, if somebody asks you to give up a little of your freedom for the greater good, that freedom is the greater good. And I'll talk with y'all again soon.